in this session, we are having Aparna Soneja as the presenter. Aparna is a software engineer at Essential and an open source advocate by passion. She is not only love to code, but also create technical contents and share with her community, including in the topic of machine learning, generative AI, etc. In short, Aparna is a developer, a content creator, educator, open source contributor, and also a public speaker who loves to deliver talks at conferences like this one. Now, her topic for today is exploring generative AI through the lens of an open source. Aparna, over to you and the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you so much, Ivy, for the great introduction. And uh, please let me know if my screen is visible or not. Okay, so hello everyone. And I'm Aparna. I am a software engineer at Accenture and I belong to India. And I, first of all, I would like to uh, like to appreciate the initiative of PyLadies team uh, to organize such an international conference where the women from all over the world uh, speaking different languages have joined in uh, in this platform. So thank you so much, PyLadies, for uh, having me as a speaker here. Okay, so I am here to discuss about generative AI through the lens of open source. So let's get started. So first of all, I would uh, I will discuss about what exactly is generative AI. Generative AI is composed of two words that is generative plus AI. That means it is a type of AI technology that can produce various types of content and content types can be either it can be image or audio or video or text okay and if i show you one second if i go to google and search for what is generative ai right here you can see it is generating the response for me so what is it using it is using generative ai for this purpose earlier uh, when we used Google, this option was not there because earlier generative AI was not enabled there, right? Now generative AI is enabled on Google. So it generates some co uh, content on the go, right? So this is generative AI. And now comes what is the difference between the AI that we were already using, that is the traditional AI and the generative AI, okay? So uh, you all use Alexa, Google Assistant or Siri, right? And what are they supposed to do? They are supposed to do some predefined tasks like you can ask them to either play your favorite song or uh, to turn on and off your lights, right? So these are used for doing the predefined tasks on which they are trained to, right? So they use AI and then comes generative AI. Generative AI can create its own content on the go. Like I have shown you the uh, example of Google. Uh, it has enabled the generative AI option, right? So it can create its own content. For example, uh, if there is a child who wants to listen a story that should be personalized, like uh, the child is the only person who decides which character should be there in the story. Like the story should contain a forest, uh, a fairy, a ghost, etc. Right. So he wants to listen such a story. So this story can be generated using generative AI, but not using AI. So this is the basic difference between AI and generative AI. And now these are the tools that are used uh, for generative AI. First one uh, is the chat GPT. And I believe uh, most of the people must be uh, familiar with chat GPT, right? And it has uh, uh, it has recently completed one year of its launch. Uh, and if you don't know how to use that, I can show. On the browser, you have to go to simply chat.openai.com and here you have to search for anything uh, that you have to query about like for example 
if I ask it what is generative AI and also it has the option like for example if you have to explain this to a young child like for example if I ask it to explain it to a five year old child okay. so this is the prompt or the query that I have given to it and uh, it has generated me the response okay and the response will have uh, will contain the will contain very easy language because I have asked it to explain it to a five-year-old child right so uh, how does it work I will give it a prompt or I will ask something and then based on understanding uh, of that prompt it will generate me the response right and then we have the Dell E and mid journey these are for the image generation and then we have the BARD BARD and chat GPT are both for text generation and then you have the GPT-4 also right and there are many other generative AI tools in the market as well now comes the question why should you learn generative AI in 2023 and that is because of the growing demand of generative AI and you must be aware of the recent layoffs that were happening right and that were because companies have already started adopting generative ai so you should learn generative ai to upskill yourself and to make yourself irreplaceable at your job okay and you should at least be aware how to use the ai tools so that you could improve productivity in less time and as i work at accenture i can tell you that Accenture has decided to invest about $3 billion in generative AI and has also announced that it will double its AI talent to 80,000 people in the coming years. Okay. So these are the reasons why you should learn generative AI. Now comes the prerequisites or there are some requirements which you, need to, uh, which you need to fulfill before learning generative AI. That is, you should have some basic knowledge of AI and machine learning and Python programming. Now comes our main topic that is generative AI combined with open source. Everything uh, can be made open source if and only if it is free of cost, publicly accessible, free to use and modify and free to distribute. That means the open source projects or the softwares are free of cost available to all. Anyone can make changes in the uh, open source projects. Okay. And the platforms used are GitHub and GitLab. I can show you GitHub. So this is the GitHub. Okay. And here you can find the open source projects related to any tech stack. Now there are many benefits of using open source softwares for generative AI and those are as I already told you that uh, in open source projects everyone is allowed to contribute and improve the project so therefore open source is all about collaboration and community okay so as many people are together working on the same project so the speed of development increases and cost decreases because as I told you open source projects are free of cost right and you have the ability to start small that means you can even start with a small idea and then there are many people who can help you out to build a large project okay as well as as many people are working together therefore if any errors or any bugs comes they can easily debug that so it results in the better quality code and increased security also as many people are together working so they share knowledge with each other okay so these are the benefits and then there are some repositories on github related to ai and machine learning where you can go and contribute okay you can simply ser either search for AI here on the search but there are many ways to search the projects open source projects but the most easiest one is directly search on the search bar 
it will show you many projects related to AI that will contain AI, okay? Like I have noted down some repositories related to AI that are TensorFlow, PyTorch, Keras, Hugging Face Transformers, OpenCV, IV, and MindsDB, okay? You can go on and explore more uh, open source projects as well. Like TensorFlow, PyTorch, and Keras are used for deep learning. Next comes our Hugging Face Transformer. This is used for NLP. NLP stands for Natural Language Processing, and it is composed of two things. That is NLU, Natural Language Understanding, and Natural Language Generation. Okay, so NLU plus NLG forms NLP. And as I had already shown you the demo of ChatGPT, the ChatGPT and other generative AI tools work on the concept of NLP that you ask it a query or you give the prompt and based on the understanding of the query, it will generate the reply for you. So first comes the understanding, then the generation. Okay. And then we have OpenCV. This is the library, open source library, which is used for computer vision. That means it is used for image processing. Now comes, how can you contribute to generative AI open source projects? And there are many ways in which you can contribute. Either you can contribute through code or documentation, testing, design, support, or advocacy. So that means open source is not just about coding. If you're not good at coding, then also you can contribute through these ways. Okay. Now comes the first way. That is the code contribution and the code contributions can be done by creating a pull request. So now what is a pull request is like, for example, if you contribute to any project, for example, if I contribute to this project, for example, this one, IV. Okay. So I am not the owner of that project. I am just a contributor of that project, right? So whenever I'm making any changes to this project, I have to ask for the approval from the owners of that project. Okay. So to ask for the approval, you have to raise a request that is called the pull request. Okay. I will also show you the demo of how to create a pull request. Okay. So the code contributions can be done by either fixing the bugs, resolving open issues of the project, some adding some new features and improving the existing code base. Then comes the documentation part. Either you can write the documentation, update documentation, or translate the documentation into different languages. <laughs> now, the third way is to contribute by testing. That means you can either, you can also report bugs by creating an issues. That means, for example, if you see a button on a website that is uh, not clickable like for example if you click on it but nothing happens so that is a bug right you can report that bug by creating an issue so i have introduced you two terms that is a pull request as well as an issue right so what is the difference between these two if you know the solution like how to debug that error or how to add a new feature you go with the pull request and if you don't know the solution also but you know that you have reported a bug or you want to add a new feature, then you ask for that using a using an issue. Okay. You can also contribute by designing the UI and creating logos for the websites or for the open source projects. Okay. And can provide support by answering questions, providing assistance in discussions, and can also review the contributions that are done by other people. And that, uh, that will improve your knowledge only, okay? If you review the contributions by other people, you will get to know the good standards to create the code and documentation, right? As well as you can speak at conferences, write blogs and articles, create videos, and spread the awareness about that open source project. So these are the ways in which you can contribute to an open source project. Now comes uh, how to create a pull request. Okay. So the first step to create a pull request is 
like for example I, if i open this op open source project okay the first step is to fork the project okay if i click on this fork button and then choose the owner uh, as i have already forked this uh, repository therefore it is showing me fork already exists right so i don't need to create a fork for this again so if i have already created the fork then uh, it will show me in my uh, repositories okay so fork means copying the open source project into your github account right and now here you can see it exists on my github account that is upper 2071 it exists here okay so the second step is the second step is to clone the project that means you have to copy this open source project into your local that means into your laptop or pc right so uh, the first step was fork second one is the clone so what is the difference between fork and clone fork means copying into uh, the github right and clone means copying into your local and to clone a project what you have to do is you have to click on this code button and then you can see this url is coming copy this one and you have to create a new folder on your laptop and there you can just simply paste this url and with the command git clone and then paste the url right so this will clone uh, the code into your local then you have to prepare the development environment that means you have to read the uh, readme.md file i can show you this one mm. yeah this one readme.md and uh, contributing uh, contributing files and code of conduct files because these files will contain uh, the details about the project like what is the project all about what are the tech stack used and what if you have to run this project on your local what softwares you have to install and uh, if you want to contribute what are the guidelines to contribute to this project etc okay so first make sure that you read all these things and then go to the folder where the code of the repository is cloned and create a new branch why creating a new branch is necessary because uh, by default the code is stored in main branch okay and you have to create a new branch because if you make the changes directly to the main branch then it might break the whole code okay then after creating a new branch you have to make the changes in the code that you have on the system and then you have to take the changes to the staging area so that means earlier the stages are uncommitted that means unsaved then they move to the staging area and after the staging area they go to the commit area where they are uh, and in the commit area they are uh, saved okay and for that you have to run the command git add and then file name in which you have uh, made the changes and then commit those changes right then you have to push the changes from your local to the github repository because till now you have done the changes on your laptop or pc right but the pull request has to be created on github so you have to push those changes from here to the github and for that you have to run the command git push origin and then branch name so this will open a window like this you have to click simply click on the uh, compare and pull request option and that will create a pull request for you and this pull request will be sent to the maintainer or the owner of the project okay and if uh, the owners if if the changes uh, suit the owner or the maintainer of the project they will accept your pr and if not they can also reject the pr okay and this the amount of happiness that you will be getting if you contribute to an open source project for the first time and your pull request gets accepted now comes how to create an issue because i have introduced two terms that is one is a pull request and the other one is the issue okay so how to create an issue to create an issue you have to just go 
head to that open source project. And here you can see this issues tab. Click here. And then you have to click on the new issue. Okay. Then you have to fill in the details about the issue, what is the issue all about, uh, etc. And then submit the issue. Okay. So as simple as that. So now there are Hi, many. Uh, sorry. Sorry, Aparna, I be here. Sorry to interrupt. The time is actually up. May I know that, like, you know, uh, would you be able to wrap up quickly? Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you very much. Yeah, you can contact me on Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, GitHub and YouTube. And I have also created two playlists on uh, YouTube. That is one for the open source and the other one is for generative AI. So you can connect me through this link tree. OK, thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you, Aparna. So sorry that I had to watch you. Uh, yeah, no time is up. Yeah, um, actually, there is questions coming from the uh, this this uh, audience here is asking about like you know uh, why you want to contribute to the uh, open source and where to find the uh, project to contribute. If you can quickly answer the questions, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so the first question was why should we contribute, right? And where where can we find the open source project to contribute? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. We should contribute because it will enhance my knowledge only because if I contribute to a JavaScript project, then it will enhance my JavaScript knowledge as a developer. Right. And as well as uh, if I contribute to any project, it will give me some confidence that, yes, I'm confident in this skill. OK. And as well as it will be beneficial for the open source project as well because it will in fact improve that project okay so right. it is advantageous to both the ways uh, to me as well from the learning perspective and to the open source project because uh, it will enhance the project All and right. if you want to um, search yeah sorry go ahead go ahead um just uh Sorry, <laughs> I thought you finished. OK, and if you want to search for the projects, then you can either directly search on the search bar or if uh, you want uh, to search for a particular text tag, then you can search with the keywords. OK, and uh, so there are many ways in which you can uh, search for the projects. <coughs> and also you have the GitHub topics section uh, on the github so you can go there and uh, search for that topic like for example if i want to contribute to react project then you, uh, i have to search for react as a topic all right thank you very much aparna thank you for the sessions thank you so much bye bye